good o we are back on the rational boomer podcast hopefully your day is going well it is saturday by the time you hear this and finally the prodigal grandpa is back ed Howdy. is back on the show it's been a while yeah. you know what when there when you've got a guy of your age and you don't see him for a while you get fucking <laughs> nervous but you're okay right yeah, yeah, I'm healthy and uh, romping and stomping. It's just my busy time of year. And I seems like every every Friday for something was coming up. I was having to take somebody somewhere, do something for somebody or myself, fighting the battle of the landscaping and all that kind of thing. They're getting a handle on it now. So I think things are hopefully going to settle down for a while. We'll see. Well, we And uh, I, I was, go ahead. Well, before I heard from you yesterday, um, I knew if there was ever going to be a day you find a way to get on the show, it would be today. <laughs> you got some shit to talk about, no That's doubt. That's true. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. Not just Donald Trump. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Supreme Court a little bit. But yeah. uh, Trump, of course, is the number one here. Uh, as to what it means, if it means anything, uh, looking around with people saying, yes, it made a difference. Others, you know, that no way am I voting for him now. And others saying, well, this makes me just as determined, you know. See, I'm, I'm right here in Trump country, and both of the local TV stations have uh, websites you can go and see the comments on the stories. And, oh, my God, uh, you wonder how these people can feed themselves. You know, yeah. they're living in a separate reality beyond anything you can imagine and uh um, you know it's all tied up with christian nationalism and seeing trump as some sort of chosen figure i don't know it's it boggles my mind and i try to stay away from it as much as possible but uh every now and then i have to take a peek well you know when we hadn't talked to you much while the trial was going on you know a couple times we were talking but but uh, what was your thoughts on the way the trial went? I thought everything went exactly the way it should be. It went perfectly for the prosecution, even when there was some question about uh, Michael Cohen. The, these were questions we all had going into it. It was nothing that was surprising. Sure. But were you surprised by the fact that that uh, his lawyer and his legal team were utter failures? I mean, in everything, every bad thing they could have done or any way they could have fucked up, they did it. No, because I think once you've established yourself the way Trump has, you're not going to get the best and the brightest. I'm sorry, because people know that this case will be over. If they will be judged by the outcome, right. if they win or if they lose, they will be judged by the outcome. And uh, it's never it's a it's not there's no win there. You get the guy off, you got a criminal off. You know, you don't get him off your failure. So there was no win. So who takes that case? Somebody who's desperate for attention, somebody who doesn't know any better. I, I'm not sure uh, why they would do that. I mean, I suppose that in a worst case scenario, a judge would have had to have assigned him a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, um, but uh, I, I don't know why anybody would work for Donald Trump ever. Ever number one, your chance of getting paid are pretty slim, and uh, number two, uh, you're going to be tainted. And my mother used to tell me, "You're known by who you hang out with." So I don't want you hanging out with so and so. I still did, but that's how I got ringworm. You know? Yeah, well, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Now, um, uh, leading up to the trial and during the trial, I heard the same thing from Republicans and Democrats alike. Oh, he'll never get convicted. He'll be totally exonerated. Oh, Donald Trump never is accountable for anything. He'll slip through this thing. And I said, now, wait a minute. This case is pretty solid. I don't know that he's going to get convicted of all charges, but he's going to get convicted. And everybody insisted. And then he had the people coming out saying, oh, it's going to be a hung jury. One woman even said, I'll bet you $100 that it's going to be a hung jury. And that was two hours before the verdict came out. So somebody owes me $100. But but the point is, is these people were convinced, <laughs> absolutely convinced that he would not be convicted. I wasn't sure that he was going to get all 34. But I, as I've said, he only needed one or two to end right. it for him. And then when I watched, I was watching R.E. Melber on MSNBC yeah. 
Count one, guilty. Count two, guilty. Count three, guilty. No. It's, it was it was fucking amazing. I was sitting in my car. I'm going, God, I should be home so I could do something on this. So I just did it in my car. But were you surprised by the turnout in terms of all 34 charges uh, being convicted? Truthfully, um, I was a little nervous, but uh, I uh, I had just mowed the lawn and I jumped in the shower and uh, my you know they were saying it was going to be like twenty minutes they'd reached a verdict and so forth so I took took a quick shower and I purposely didn't look to see if if uh, my wife said she would pause the TV so I could come and see it <clears throat> and uh, I got there just just she didn't have to pause it I got there just to say all right started doing the countdown and uh, I was reassured, but I, I had a pretty good feeling. I'm getting a call from Phoenix, Arizona. I don't know why, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, wait cancel that motherfucker here, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, but you're in front of it. Oh, uh, I'll duck uh, down. Uh, my, my button. Nah, you're still there. Nah, can't. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now you're back. Yeah. All right. It's gone. And uh, I don't know anybody in Phoenix, so like I'm going to answer, right? Yeah, it's uh, probably car warranty. Maybe uh, something along those lines. I haven't been getting those lately. I don't know why. But uh, I did get a certified letter from a towing company telling me they had towed the car that I traded in that I wrecked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they wanted $175, and I told them to whistle for it uh that you know i traded it in and i suppose uh, yeah I, well you know that was exactly what i was going to say but i'm too class <laughs> yeah well i'm not i'm not clearly yeah uh, but, but, but uh did, what did you anyway, feel a certain yeah. amount of joy after you heard the 34 oh, counts absolutely and uh it, it got me to thinking that you know trump does not win court cases no they, they tried to, to bring 60 different um, you know, election challenge cases all were turned down. Uh, e. Jean Carroll, you know, he loses. He loses again. <laughs> you know, anytime they put him in a courtroom, he's going to lose. Why? He's a criminal. That's why. Come on, people, use your noggins. That's the problem. Trump is a criminal. Anytime that he goes before a judge and jury, he's going to lose. Yeah. And that's why. That's why they stacked the Supreme Court. That's why they've got a Lynn Cannon delaying these other cases because they know that Trump would lose. So they're hoping, they're praying, they're doing everything they can, skullduggery-wise, to make sure that, that he wins the election and then it'll all go away. Um, I, think they're, I think they're pissing up a rope, though, because I really do believe, number one, polls are shit. Um, I'm sorry, they have eight outdated methods of measuring they uh, they measure wrong. Uh, they will uh, count Republicans more than Democrats. Uh, they had a poll a while back where you look at the methodology. It was like 15 percent to 70, whatever the I can't do the math in my head, <laughs> whatever it was. You know, it was mostly it was heavily skewed to Republicans and uh, uh, not likely voters even. So uh, they could manipulate the polls to make, make it look like Trump has great support. But, uh, you know, you look at him in the Bronx, see what he uh, what he actually drew versus all the fake crowd things they were putting out there. Uh, his support is going is is dwindling where it's not dwindling is with billionaires because he's promised them another tax cut. Right. Um, and billion billionaires own the corporations that own the companies that do the polls. So there you go. Well, you know, and I, I've said you can try to use polls, but they've been wrong consistently for the last 20 years, yeah. um, the better determination as to support would be fundraising. I mean, what better way to determine support than somebody taking hard earned money and giving it to a candidate and Joe Biden is winning by double. Now, if yeah. the polls were close, wouldn't it make sense that Donald Trump had just as much money as Joe Biden, but he doesn't. Right. So that makes me question the, 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 the polls. It was, um, uh, 
you know, to be honest, when I found out it was 34 felony charges, I was giddy as a motherfucker. I was giggling like a schoolgirl because so many people said that he won't get convicted and 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 uh, he'll slip away from this. And this proved once and for all, after eight years, that this dumb fuck is accountable for the first time in his life. And he must be just absolutely flummoxed or confused because he's never experienced this before in real terms. Well, I'm, I just watched him on TV in mean, real time doing his usual shtick. And he he's doing, he's either lying or he's attacking someone. That's That's all he can do. Yeah. You know, because he can't tell the truth ever because he's already lied about everything. So he can't ever tell the truth. That's why he couldn't testify. That's why his lawyers told him, they sat him down, I'm sure, and said, look, if you testify, they're going to get you on perjury because you'll lie. We know you will. That's what you do. That's your thing. We get that. So you can't testify. And then he goes out and says, you know, uh, uh, if they can do it to me, they can do it to you. Yes, because you're a criminal. <laughs> that's, that's what that's what judges and juries do. They convict criminals. They right. can, if I'm a criminal, they can do it to me. If I'm not, they can't. It's that simple. If Donald Trump wasn't Donald Trump, after watching that speech he gave, I would almost feel sorry for him because it was absolutely pathetic. It was disjointed. Yeah. Uh, he was just riffing, and he's not good at riffing. He's talking about stuff that nobody understands. I don't think he understands. Like you say, he's lying. He's attacking. He's at that stage where a narcissist is corner and there is no way out. So he is just absolutely flailing. I said on a TikTok, if I was sitting there and Donald Trump were my father, I would say, Dad, give me the keys. Sit down. Have a glass of water. There's something seriously wrong here. He didn't have the same kind of energy he normally has either. He didn't seem to have that fire. He seems to be resigned to the fact that he's losing and there's no way out. Well, and when you go back a ways, the only reason he's running, I mean, his ego would probably have made him run, but he's, he declared really early, remember? Two and years. And the reason was he hoped. Yeah, he hoped that would derail uh, all of the cases. He thought by being a candidate that that would stop them from bringing uh, these charges. Of course, it didn't. No. Then he had to he had to um, call on his Supreme Court nominees to, you know, take a case that no other Supreme Court would ever have taken because it's bogus. This whole presidential immunity thing is simply bogus. There is nothing to consider. There is nothing. It's already separated. If it's official duties, I mean, okay. Um, take George W. Bush, for example. George W. Bush let the CIA collect, uh, create these prisons in other countries where they could torture people. He let that happen. Now, in my mind, uh, he should suffer for that. He should be charged and go to prison or something for doing that. It is immoral. It's inhuman. But he gets away with it because it was official duties. And, and you know, we, we let a lot of stuff slide, okay, right, right. When, it, when it has to do with terrorism and so forth. It's still immoral. He still should be punished by it, but he never will. Uh, Reagan, Iran Contra, got away with it. Why? Well, it was, it was in there with official duties, okay? He was conducting foreign policy, whatever you want to call it. Still illegal, still immoral, got away with it. Okay, well, Trump is no different. Now, the thing is that this was trying to defeat, trying to uh, overturn an election is not part of a president's official duties. No. It can never be. Nobody will say that. Uh, so this is just a delaying tactic. And the Supreme Court will sit on this until the last day of this term, and then they will throw it back to uh, uh, the lower court with some sort of bogus instruction to narrow it or something like that. And that will be the end of it. And they have done what they were supposed to do. And that was to keep it from coming up before the election. Now, Donald Trump better hope he wins because I don't think the Democrats are going to let this go. I think every right. one of these cases will come to trial eventually. And Trump will wind up wearing an orange jumpsuit. He won from this one. I don't think, unless the judge gets really pissed off and wants to give him, make him an object lesson, which I pray he will, but uh, he probably won't. 
Well, let's uh, talk. He doesn't want it appealed. Uh, I saw Alan Dershowitz today saying that no judge will overturn this. No, no judge will overturn this on appeal. None. Now, and Dershowitz, for whatever you may think about him, is a pretty savvy lawyer. You got to admit. Uh, he's a goofball, and he likes getting a massage in his underpants, but. That's beside the point. Now, now, what I will yeah. say, I, I want to talk about this potential for jail because I've got another side that I want to bring up. But first, before I do that, I I think I owe Elvin Bragg an apology. I think all of America owes Elvin Bragg apologies because when he took over, remember he said, "Yeah, I'm not going to go after Donald Trump," even though the the Pomerances and such before were going after him. They said, "We're not going to go after him." But they did go after his company and they got yeah. convictions with the Trump organization. But the important thing to remember is in spite of what right. he said initially, he was the first person to indict Donald Trump. He is now the first yeah. person to convict Donald Trump. As much as we were angry at him when he took over, he did all the right things in all the right time. And he ran a incredible prosecution and got him on all 34 counts, on counts and on crimes that a lot of people said he could never get. So we all owe Elvin Bragg uh, an apology because he did a motherfucking job and he's done a job that nobody else has yet to do. That's right. The prosecution in general uh, performed impeccably. And I got to give big props to the jury who listened, paid attention, didn't fall asleep like uh, like Trump did, and uh, did their duty in the face of harassment. I mean, they all have to know that if their names get out, and I fear they will, that they're targeted, much like uh, Judge Mershon. When can he stop looking behind, looking over his shoulder? We don't know. Um, and I, I hope they're really protecting him because I don't know what happens in the case if something happened to him before the sentencing. Who would then pass sentence? I'm not sure on that. But uh, really, I'm more concerned with his safety because this was a judge who really played it exactly right. He didn't let Trump trigger him into tossing him in jail. Right. He walked the line. He, he, he used the gag order just the way it should have been done. Uh, gave Trump more leeway probably than others would have, but that will keep that will look good when the appeal comes. That he really kept his cool and did everything right. And uh, if Dershowitz says this is uh, this this cannot be overturned, I, I actually believe him. He has no incentive to say otherwise or right. to say so if it's not true. Right. And of course, they're screaming, we're going to appeal, we're going to appeal. But as you pointed out, he hasn't won an appeal in fucking six years. So uh, I'm not worried about appeals anyway. Right. But you brought up the potentiality of him serving time in prison. And I, I, I predicted this. Yeah. I said everybody would say he wouldn't get indicted. He gets indicted. Everybody would say that he wouldn't get prosecuted. He got prosecuted. Then everybody would say he wouldn't get convicted and he got convicted. And now they push the goalposts back and say they won't, he won't get jail time. Now I have no way of knowing for sure if he's going to get jail time. The common thought is, well, he's a former president. This isn't really a crime that uh, involves jail time. So he probably won't get jail time. That's reasonable thinking. But here's some other things you got to think about when it comes to jail time. First of all, is Judge Juan Marchand. He's a guy that's not fucking around. He's pretty conservative and pretty down to the letter of the law. <clears throat> I want you to think about this. <clears throat> Alan Weisselberg, first time offender, no violence, went to jail. Mm -hmm. Michael Cohen, first time offender, no violence was involved in the very crimes that Donald Trump is being convicted of. He went to jail for three years, or at least that's what the sentence was. He was like 15 months or something like that. The other thing a judge considers, and Judge Marchand said he would consider this, is, is there remorse? Clearly, there's no remorse in Donald Trump. Is there a possibility of recidivism? Meaning, could he, would he do this again? He said he would do it again. And then Absolutely. you have to factor in 13 
violations of the gag order. He didn't really punish him during the trial, but that may come into effect in the sentencing. All those things have to be considered. And as I said, he's made a point to say he's not a president, a former president, a, a presidential candidate. He's like all of us. He's going to be treated like all of us. So if Alan Weisselberg and Michael Cohen got time, why would you suggest that Donald Trump can't get time? Because he's in a worse position than either of those two were. Yeah, your point is well taken. He actually violated the gag order in his latest little diatribe there right? by referring to uh, a lawyer who they called a fixer. That identifies that witness. Right. And he's not supposed to vilify or talk about any witnesses. He violated the gag order right there. So um, obviously that uh, there's no remorse. He just <laughs> he just did it again. So there's your recidivism. But uh, the other thing is just simply um, he insulted the judge and the judge's daughter uh, throughout the whole trial. Right. And, and today. And uh, called it a rigged trial and all of that. How many of us under the same situation would not take a little pleasure in giving the guy some time just to see him in that orange jumpsuit? Somebody asked me recently, is the gag order still in effect, even though the case is over? <laughs> And I honestly didn't know. I thought it might be done because the jury's gone. Turns out I was wrong about that. The gag order is still in place up until the time of sentencing. Yep. And he could violate the gag order. Now, here's exactly. the difference. He could still be put in jail for violating that gag order. And he might be more apt to be put in jail because exactly. of the gag cool. order, because the whole reason the judge didn't put him in jail was to not upend and disrupt the case. Well, the case is done. If he's right. still violating the gag order, yep. he could, he, whether he gets sentenced to prison for these crimes, he could end up sitting there for a couple of days from violating the gag order. Exactly. Um, I have to say this was done perfectly. Um, Alan Bragg um, waited until he had a good case to bring it. Uh, the prosecutors brought the evidence and presented it in a way that was irrefutable. The uh, the jury listened, paid attention, asked questions of the judge throughout their deliberations when they needed them, uh, checked testimony and so forth. When they were doing that, I was pretty sure they were going to bring back at least some guilty verdicts. Uh, that We got 34 of them is just uh, uh, superb. Um I would say to anyone still supporting Donald Trump, what's the matter with you? Yeah, Jesus you Christ, know, how dumb are you? The hell, wake the hell up. You know, are you that much into some sort of um, fantasy world? Do you live on magical thinking? What's going on here? This guy is an obvious criminal. He's a rapist. That has been proven in court. He has, uh, he has vilified his victim and has to pay lots of money for it. Um, he, has, uh, he ran a fake university and got off uh, with a slap on the wrist while he bankrupted millions of people and drove them into debt and so forth. This guy's a bad dude. What yeah. are you thinking? Yeah. What are you thinking? You know, he was, he's cheated, cheated on every wife he's ever had. He's just he's, uh, an incredible and he knows nothing. He knows no. absolutely nothing. He, no, there is he no knowledge in his head. You so know, why, why, why are you supporting this guy? You know, it's interesting is last or uh, the night after the, uh, the, the, the convictions, Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, appeared on Fox News with Sean Hannity, which to me seems ill-advised. Going on yeah, national very. television after getting your ass handed to you? I don't think I would have done that. But he's sitting there, and Sean Hannity is absolutely distraught. And he basically says to Todd Blanche that he saw a press conference with the DA and uh, the media and stuff. And Hannity says to Todd Blanche, they're laughing at you. They're laughing at Donald Trump. Doesn't that upset you? And it clearly upsets Sean Hannity. 
And Todd Blanche said, yeah. yeah, it's upsetting. They won, but it's upsetting. You got to understand Donald Trump is a husband, a father, and a grandfather. Like, we should extend some sympathy. And I pointed out in a TikTok, yes, he is all those things. But he's also a rapist. He's also a defamer. He's also a liar. He's also been impeached twice. He's also been convicted of 34 felony charges. And if he was such a father and grandfather, where was Melania? Where was Barron? Where was Ivanka? Where were these people in court if that's a big deal? You want us to feel sorry for you? This is the essence of a narcissist. They fight, they're tough, and as soon as it gets put back on them, they're the fucking victim. And we're supposed to feel sorry for him. Sorry. I don't feel sorry. You're getting what you deserve. Yeah, this this is absolutely true. And, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. This guy stole state secrets and probably sold them or gave them uh, to our enemies. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm fully convinced of that. And somebody needs to remove Aileen Cannon from the bar and uh, and from the bench and uh, get a real judge in there. This woman was never qualified to be a judge. The selection, uh, the people who uh, vet, vet these people said not qualified. He, he appointed her anyway, uh, right. possibly with something like this in mind down the road. Um, anywhere, and you know, down in Georgia, they're attacking uh, the, the DA down there. Uh, all of these delaying tactics are very obvious Anyone who doesn't see that is is simply choosing not to, and uh, and then we have this compromised Supreme Court, that um, lowest rated Supreme Court in history, I believe, right at this yeah, point, and deservedly so, deservedly so. Yeah, you know, um, the other court cases, and the prospect of them coming after the election. I think this was a stra this obviously was a strategy for Donald Trump. He thought he could get himself off if he won the election, so he wanted it to happen after the election. Clearly that wasn't the case with the Manhattan District. That's a state court, so he couldn't have done anything anyway. But because I don't believe he has any chance in hell of winning the election, I think the idea of delaying these till after the election was a miscue. It was bad for them. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Because if these, the, the Democrats are going to win, these cases are going to come to fruition at some point, regardless of what the delay is. But when they come to fruition, Donald Trump is at his most vulnerable state. He will have been convicted of 34 felony charges. He won't be a presidential candidate. He won't be a president. He'll have a Republican Party that stepped away from him because they're tired of losing. Donald Trump will be out there on an island facing three serious criminal trials. And even if he doesn't go to jail for, for what happened in the Manhattan District, any one of those three will require jail time. Donald Trump is in trouble and he will have no protection. Yeah. I'm wondering um, at what point now this, this of course is assuming he doesn't get reelected, which I not would uh, don't think he will, he will. Um, at least not fairly, but uh, should he, should he not be reelected? I wonder if he will not uh, uh, seek asylum in some uh, friendly corner of the world, if there is such a place for him, once he's no longer useful, he's nothing but yesterday's fish. Right. You know, I mean, the leftover sushi, that's what Donald Trump is. Uh, so far as the other, uh, you know, oligarchs and dictators are, uh, are uh, you're only useful while you're useful and then right. you're trash. And that's pretty much Trump. I'm wondering, though, if he won't try to run. Now, this conviction does two things. Number one, he can't even leave town without the permission of a, of a and fly home without the permission of a probation officer. Right. Uh, the other thing is he can't vote for himself. Yeah. He can't show, unless Ron DeSantis changes the law in Florida, which he's tried to do. But, uh, um, you know, we really, really want all those felons to be able to vote. Now, once someone has served their sentence, has been rehabilitated, I say give them the voting rights back, but that is not Donald Trump. 
No, uh, the, the one motherfucker that's not voting for Donald Trump is Donald Trump. And uh, unless Ron DeSantis, exactly. and I don't really even care because if Ron DeSantis does uh-huh. that, he'll just sink his career even more so when it's all said and done. Um, th- this Remember when you used to hear Ron DeSantis almost as much as Trump? Oh, Remember yeah. That? Yeah, you don't hear him that now. Was, that was a daily thing. He was he was in there, you know, and now nah, Ron who? Yeah, you know, yeah. number one, he gets, keeps getting his ass kicked by Disney for one thing. You know, I don't think he'll even be reelected, much less that he has any sort of political future. Um, I'm, I'm starting. I'm thinking that a number of political dynasties are going to fall in the fall. Yeah. I think Marco Rubio is going to be toast. I think uh, um, Ted Cruz. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Ted Cruz is another. Um, uh, Ted Cruz and uh, all of those uh, those people in the House, the uh, mm-hmm. the the mega Republicans in the House. I think most of those, the Boberts and so forth. I Marjorie. think they're all going down. Marjorie will be gone, uh, I believe, and uh, a number of others will also meet their uh, political maker, so to speak. Um, Arkansas Governor, uh, what's her face? I think she's going to go down. Um, um, you know, she was Trump's press secretary for right. a hot God, I can't remember her name because um, she's fucking forgettable and she's stupid and she's in Arkansas, yeah, you for know, God's sake. Um, I wonder about Chris, Christy Noem out in South Dakota. I think uh, she has a good chance of uh, not being around too long. I mean, I, I don't think enough people I, like. I don't think in the next <laughs> collection she could even win dog catcher. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Don't you think? I salute you. Don't you think? I said this before this convictions came out, and, and I, I I'm a firm believer in destiny and how things change the climate, and I think these convictions change the climate entirely. Not only for Donald Trump, but the Republican Party, especially those people who will continue yeah. to stick by Donald Trump. People always want to say, well, he won in 2016. He could win in 2024. We're talking apples, apples and 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 wood boxes. It's not even close. Donald Trump is not right. the same man he was in 2016. The country isn't the same country as it was in 2016. You can't even compare them. We know yeah, too and, much and about James Donald Comey, Trump. James Comey's not going to come up with a bogus October surprise to blow Hillary out of the water either. Thank you, Mr. Comey. Well, and that's a good, and that's a good topic to talk about. We keep hearing about 2020. It was a rigged election. It was stolen. Donald Trump actually won. With these convictions mm-hmm. of Donald Trump, these convictions say Donald Trump was doing some underhanded, dirty shit in order to affect the election. In addition to that, we know for a fact that Russia was meddling in the 2016 election to benefit Donald Trump. So we know that we can legitimately say that 2016 was a rigged election. 2020, they say, but there's no evidence. There's been no evidence, but we got all kinds of evidence and convictions that say 2016 was a rigged election. Donald Trump was never a legitimate president. Right, and unfortunately, we have a bogus attorney general who uh, somehow or other is either a Trump supporter or an idiot. Take your pick, or some sort of milk toast. I don't know what to call him, but uh, he could very easily have charged Trump as uh, um, the uh, special counsel indicated that there was all kinds of obstruction um, that uh, Trump could be charged with. But he has not he's chosen not to do so Uh, running out the statute of limitations, I guess. But uh, he has been a severe disappointment. And I'm really shocked that that um, that Biden just didn't replace him at some point. He should have. It's a mistake that he didn't. I don't care uh, who is telling him, no, you can't do that. It'll look bad. Screw look bad. Do it. Yeah. See, that's always the Democrats failing. The Republicans just go ahead and do it. And nine times out of 10, they get away with it. Right, right. And exactly. the, Demo- the Democrats toe the line and they don't and they get their ass handed to them often 
because the Republicans don't care about the rule of law, obviously. They're vilifying it high and low right now, uh, calling it an aberration, calling it something that it's not. It was a straightforward case with a judge and a jury, and they found the guy guilty because he was. And, and let there be no mistake here. He was out there today trying to muddy the waters and, oh, it was about business practices. No, it was about uh, the election. It was about election interference on his part in which he was trying to hide something so that it wouldn't impact his chance of being elected. That's what the case was about. That's what they proved it was about. And that's what he's convicted of, uh, trying to do that. And that can, is the, the sum of it. You can say whatever you want. He can say whatever you want. It's too late. He's convicted. It's over. It's done. Right. The argument is over. The appeal won't work. You were talking about Merrick Garland, the AG, whether he's a Trump humper or he's uh, corrupt or whatever it is. I'll tell you what it is with Mar uh, what I think it is with Merrick Garland. He's not a Trump humper. He's not corrupt. He's a pussy ass bitch. He's afraid. He's tentative. And we cannot have uh, an attorney general who is tentative. You've got to go after crime. That is your fucking job. They should have indicted Donald Trump. Uh, two days after Joe Biden was inaugurated. If that were the case, we'd be done with all these cases and we wouldn't have this confusion. Merrick Garland most certainly is a failure. I understand why they haven't gotten rid of him as yet because of all these trials and shit. They don't want to cause any more delay. But once the election is over, there is no reason not to fire him. And that should be one of the first things that Joe Biden does get somebody who understands the job and is assertive enough to fucking do the job. I nominate Amy Klobuchar. Absolutely. She cleaned house already. Uh, being both from Minnesota, uh, I, not being originally from Minnesota, but it was certainly my home of choice for many years. Uh, I respect her greatly. Uh, she would make a great president too, but let's start her out at AG because she can kick some real ass. I guarantee yeah. it. Come on, Amy, take the job. Now, um, I'm disappointed with Merrick Garland. That's that's my problem here because this could have been over already if they had simply charged him with these cases the first month after the insurrection. This would have he would have been in jail, and this would have all been done. Right. And they could have thrown on the, the missing documents case on top of it and everything else. And, and he'd, he'd be under the jail. But no. Uh, and now now we have this, this bogus Supreme Court interfering. Uh, you notice how quick they were to rule on things that supported Trump. Oh, to yeah. Take things that supported Trump and rule like that within a week. And now they have to drag this out till the end of the term and then throw it back where it won't be heard in time for the election. Uh, no, this is uh, it's, it's happening before our eyes. The judiciary is compromised. Right. And it's it's I'm grateful that there are still judges like Mershon and there are still courts like in New York where this can happen, where you can get an honest trial right. and that you don't have interference from the judiciary because. I, I swear, starting with Reagan, they started working this so that they could get this uh, Supreme Court who would be just a tool of the Republican Party. And, uh, you know, now you've got Roberts saying, well, it would look bad for him to come and sit in with the Senate and hear what they had to say. It looks bad when you don't. You don't. Yeah, I, I, I want to delve into the Supreme Court. We're going to take a break here in a few minutes, but I want to talk about that in depth because I think the Supreme Court situation is a dire situation for the very existence yes. of, uh, of of our democracy. And we'll talk about that in the next, next half. But I wanted to bring something up to you, something that you just mentioned. I'm watching the TV news, the cable news, and I'm hearing politicians. After these convictions, politicians and the media and some people are coming out and saying, well, we don't want to gloat. We can't gloat. It's not nice to gloat. And I say, Let's speak, gloat. speak for yourself, motherfucker. I'm going to gloat because for eight years, these motherfuckers have been gloating over shit that didn't even happen. They gloat. This yeah. is a, this is a game. I don't care what anybody says. It's a game. And we have to understand that the Republicans have been playing the hunger games and we've been playing Uncle Wiggly and Mystery Date. 
that's got to stop. We've got to gloat. We've got, we've got them on the run. And this is the time when you have to have a killer instinct. You've got to finish yeah. them. Otherwise they will metastasize and come back. We've got to rid ourselves, eradicate these people from our government. Otherwise we are going to pay price the price for a long time to come. Our kids and our grandkids will pay the price. So now this isn't the time to be polite or the better person. We've got to get in the mud and fight with them on their terms and beat their ass. Here, here. <laughs> Somehow I had a feeling you'd agree. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate that. I tell you what, we're going to take, a, <laughs> we're, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back, talk more about the trial and we'll talk about the Supreme Court because I think that's absolutely important. So stick with us. We will be right back. We're back on the Rational Boomer podcast. We're grateful that Ed has uh, been able to come back on the show. He's here regularly, but for the last several weeks, we've had some miscues and it didn't work out, but we're glad he came back, especially after the events that have just happened. We're talking about crimes that Donald Trump has committed. And I think one of the greatest crimes that Donald Trump has committed against this country and to democracy isn't actually an official crime, but it is certainly criminal and is what he did, what he and the Republicans did by shoving three incompetent, corrupt, criminal um, uh, justices down our throats when we already had one in Clarence Thomas. Now, we had an interesting week with the Supreme Court. They are the lowest rated approval rating in the history of the Supreme Court, and they've earned that. Um <coughs> We had the thing with with Justice Alito. There's so many things we could talk about with uh, with Clarence Thomas and the others. But Justice Alito had this situation where shortly after the insurrection in his yard, he was flying a flag that supported the insurrectionist. And if that weren't enough, then we find out he has another home on a beach someplace where he flew a different flag that also supported the insurrectionist. And, of course, he blamed his wife. His wife told a story. We find out the wife fucking lied. And given that there are some cases about the January 6th situation coming up, uh, Democrats rightfully said you should recuse yourself. Recuse yourself. And he said, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. So right. then they said, we, we need to talk to Justice Chief Justice John Robert to discuss this situation. He goes, nah, I'm not going to do this. We have a Supreme Court. Because it would look bad. Yeah, it yeah. would look bad. It would look bad if you didn't, like you said. But we've got, a, we've got a Supreme Court that's just going rogue, and everything they're doing is hurting this country and, and our very democracy. It's, it's frustrating. Right, and, and this is what I was referencing before, this idea that the Republicans just go ahead and do it. Uh, and, and if it's never been done before, uh, people are surprised. Uh, Supreme Court justices, at least in in theory, used to be distinguished jurists who had a track record, um, who had maybe managed a case of some import. Ruth Bader Ginsburg with women's issues and uh, others with the civil rights issues and that sort of thing, and still others. They had an expertise. They had proven themselves to be very worthy individuals in addition to being top-notch lawyers. Right. This is not the case with any of the three appointments that you mentioned, nor with a couple of the others uh, on the, um, the Republican side. And I say the Republican side because they are partisans. It's not that they are just conservative. They are partisan Republican plants. And worse than that, at least three of them are Christian nationalists. Right. And that's what the flag at the at the, uh, the summer home is a Christian nationalist flag. let's let's get that. It wasn't just it wasn't just that it su supported the insurrection. It supports a future insurrection by Christian nationalists, and that's even worse. Uh, also, I'd like to point 
out that Alito and his wife uh, supposedly, and I believe this is the testimony of the neighbors that they were supposedly responding to. Apparently, they've had a lot of trouble with them. And at one point, they were even they even called the cops on the Alitos for threatening mm. actions and that the wife spit at them <laughs> when they met her on the street. So uh, uh, this is the kind of thing that people say happens in trailer parks when they're, when right. they're wanting to malign the residents of trailer parks. But no, this is what uh, this is common, apparently common to the Alitos who see themselves as holy on a holy mission. And I truly believe this. I believe Amy Comey Barrett does the same thing. And probably so does Neil Gorsuch, Gorsuch and, and possibly Roberts himself. He has certainly moved to the right since this cabal has has come together with the Trump appointments. And um, I think he's afraid of them. As a matter of fact, I think all of these justices came with kind of like, uh, um, I can't remember, there's a, a certain science fiction or spy book or something where the assassins would have a bomb implanted in the back of their head. And if they failed, somebody would press a button and blow their head off so that they couldn't reveal any secrets. I, I think most of these uh, Supreme Court justices that were appointed by Trump have that implanted bomb, at least figuratively speaking. There's something in their background that could be used to destroy them. So they are they are they are being manipulated by um, the, the oligarchs and and the the billionaires and so forth, the Federalist Society, if you will, the the people that are also manipulating Thomas just by giving him money because he's a sleaze bag. And so is his wife, and they, well, he should recuse as well. And I, I will say this, uh, of the people that Donald Trump uh, appointed in the Supreme Court, I don't know that I can say that Kavanaugh is a Christian national. What we do know about Kavanaugh is he likes fear, and the only way he can find intimacy with a woman is by force. That's what we know about Kavanaugh. And and right. also, he's got some benefactor that pays off his debt. I want to find out who that guy is because I got some debt I'd like to let go of. But every one of these people that Donald Trump appointed were either not qualified, they were incompetent, they're Christian nationals. They are solely working against our democracy. You brought up the whole immunity thing. Now, there's no way in yes. our wildest dreams could we imagine that they're going to give Donald Trump immunity. And even if they do, it doesn't affect the Manhattan District thing. Um, but the fact, as you said, that they're willing to delay this to benefit Donald Trump is troubling because that's not what the Supreme Court should be doing. But as I said, them delaying this for him may be the worst thing they can do for him. So we'll see what happens after he loses the election. But I've never, to be honest with you, when it comes to the Supreme Court, I've never really heard much. I've never known more about the Supreme Court than I know now. They were just there. You trusted them. They did the rule of law and they only cared about justice. Now it's very clear that it is partisan, as you pointed out. And it can't be partisan. We can't have that and be able to hold on to democracy. Right. And the reason you never heard anything about them is that they didn't try to reverse established law. That's why they were each asked when they were nominated and they were being sitting before the Senate, they were asked about Roe v. Wade. And they all said it's established law. Who's not going to touch it? And then the first thing they did was, you know, of course, roll it back. Right. Uh, and they lied, essentially. And, and they are going to try to do the same thing with birth control. They will try to do the same thing with the abortion pills. They will try to do the same, same thing with gay marriage and with interracial marriage. They're all in a chopping block. And uh, people who don't realize that, and, and it boggles your mind when you have a guy in a mixed-race marriage who wants to outlaw it. Maybe he doesn't like her so much. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is they want to do that, and they will if they're not stopped. And um, they are all illegitimate. But uh, the, somebody has something on them making them do this. And uh, remember, these were all people who were involved, or most of them were somehow involved with um, criminal administrations. 
Right. The Reagan administration was a criminal administration. You had Ryan Contra and a bunch of other things. Nixon was a criminal administration with Watergate. George W. Bush was a criminal administration with the way he conducted, uh, got us into the war in Iran and in Afghanistan, and many other things he did. These were people who were enabling criminal administrations, which all the Republicans, except possibly George Bush Sr., but he probably was too, we just didn't catch him. But all of these people were involved with these criminal administrations, and that's where their expertise lies. And the, the Supreme Court should never have been involved with uh, Gore v. Bush. Bush. They, they, there was no reason for them to be law, involved. The law clearly leaves that to the states, and they interfered with it. So, uh, and they were all part of that. Not they weren't justices then, but they were part of the law. Uh, the the people who worked on that case so um, supported that. It should never have happened. Al Gore should have been our president. There would have been no Iraq War and no Great Depression, no uh, Great Recession. Uh, these things have consequences. And when you have criminal administrations, which Nixon, Reagan, Bush, and Trump have all been, this is what you get. Yeah, but Bill Clinton got oral sex in the White House. And what about Hillary's fucking email? <laughs> If that's yeah, the worst thing that, that's right? happened. I mean, they tried false false equivalents, right? Yeah. And yeah. they continue to do that. You know, I, 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 when we talk about, I, I heard somebody recently say this and I just had to laugh because it's so pathetic. Um, they were talking about Donald Trump's uh, <laughs> sexual proclivities and uh, his assaults and such. And somebody honestly said, yeah, what about Bill Clinton? You mean Bill Clinton from 30 fucking years ago? That's the closest thing you have to do to fight against him? They still try to say things about uh, Joe Biden, but they have yet to show us one shred of evidence. They want to crucify Joe Biden with no evidence, and they complain about crucifying Donald Trump with nothing but fucking evidence and witnesses. It's just, I mean, it's almost childish. Yeah. It's it's hilarious to watch them do this. It's 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 silly. And now we've got Republicans like Ted Cruz and people of note that are Republicans that are coming out and saying how terrible this is. Does the Supreme Court and these politicians not see what's coming? Donald Trump is going to get convicted again and again and again. You're going to lose no. horribly in the November election. Does the Supreme Court not see that when that happens, there's going to be some changes happening to them, but they're still sticking to Donald Trump. It's just fucking stupid. Read the room, for God's sake. It is stupid, but they're all in. They are. You they know, are. they can't back up now or they're admitting if they back out now, they, uh, you know, the Republicans who have come out and said it was a good verdict, Asa Hutchinson, Hogan, different ones that have been Trump critics all along, the, the rest of them. And my God, let's throw in Nikki Haley here. What's the matter with you? You know, one minute you're telling us this guy isn't qualified to be dog catcher. And the next minute you're going to vote for him. Uh, you, and you, not that you ever had any credibility, but that's all gone. Woman. Good I Lord. I think the reason why these people do double down and triple down all the time is uh, a psychosis or something. They refuse to admit they're wrong, and they'd rather fall off the cliff than admit they're wrong. They're terrified of being wrong. When what they should have done in after the inauguration is just, we fucked up, Donnie was bad, let's focus on what's good and they would have been in a much better situation, but they keep doubling down and tripling down and they just put themselves deeper in a fucking hole. Yeah. I was trying to remember what they did after Nixon. Um, when, uh, Ford, you know, when they, Ford became the sacrificial lamb and took over the presidency and so forth. And, uh, um, I was trying to remember after that, you didn't see a lot of Republicans out there saying Nixon was innocent. No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. You know, I mean, you saw uh, Ford give him the pardon so that they could move on and so forth. But you didn't see that. You didn't see people um, trying to rehabilitate an obviously 
guilty person. They accepted it. And then before you knew it, they were back in the White House with Reagan because unfortunately, Jimmy Carter got a, uh, had a recession come on that was not his fault. Right. But, you know, he su suffered the consequences. And, uh, um, well, 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 the thing about it is, is that, um, um, it was the Republicans that pressured Richard Nixon to resign. The Republicans yeah, himself pushed them out. They realized that this was bad and he needed to go. And then, of course, Gerald Ford got to be the president when when he resigned. And uh, Gerald Ford and the Republicans fucked around and found out then, too. They pardoned yeah. Richard Nixon. Gerald Ford's a one-term guy. Now, he there was nothing unusually bad about him, at least in public knowledge at the time. He specifically lost his reelection bid because he pardoned Richard Nixon. You'd think yeah. they'd learn a lesson from that. You'd think they'd learn a lesson. We got burned. Don't touch the stove again, but they refuse. They continue to do the same shit. And it wasn't Nixon, just Nixon who had to resign. It was his vice president too. Agnew mm -hmm. had to go. That whole thing was a fucking, uh, a fucking mess. And then yeah, Gerald well, Agnew was him. a whole. Uh, Agnew was a whole different thing. He was just corrupt. You yeah, know? yeah. Just fl flat out taking money for appointments and all that kind of stuff. I mean, he was he was just flat out a crook, uh, which I guess you could say Nixon was too. But at least he was his was in the service of trying to get reelected. I guess you could say. But yeah. whereas Agnew was just in it for the money. But uh, yeah, that's why I say it was a criminal administration right all down the line. You know, I mean, if you if you if you take the Republican administrations um, and I'm not counting Trump here. There were 36 prosecutions of members of Republican administrations from Reagan on that resulted in prison sentences, 36 right. in Re Reagan and Bush, Bush, and uh, who was the other one? Um, Ford. Uh, anyway, all of those in the Democrats, two. Right. 36, two. 36, two. That tells you all you need to know about Republicans. They're all criminals, or at least they recruit criminals for their administrations. Right, right. And, you know, Donald Trump is uh, looking to, bring Manafort back for his campaign. He yeah, was not just him. Uh, yeah. Uh, the general too. Yeah. No, Flynn. The other one. Flynn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Flynn. Manafort yeah. was specifically thrown in jail for colluding with the Russians. The very thing that Donald Trump says they didn't do, even though his campaign manager did it. It's amazing how certain parts yeah. of the electorate forget things. And that's that's one of the things yeah. I was going to talk about with this trial. He got 34 felony charges. Now, the question is, does the administration, does the Biden campaign keep shoving this down the people's throat? And I say yes, because things cool off and people forget things or they forget how bad it is and something else gets their attention. I think. Joe Biden and the Democrats have to keep this in the forefront. They have to keep it in the forefront and keep announcing his convictions because this should be uh, a non-starter for most people of intelligence. We can't hope to change the minds of the base, but we've got to keep the people in the middle in the mix and in mind of what's happening in, in order to gain what we need to gain in the election in November. Well, you're right, and we have to keep going for, uh, we have to keep reaching out to people who have a modicum of intelligence, because the base doesn't. A Trump supporter is one of two things. A person who is pissed off because they think that minorities are succeeding at their expense, right. when, of course, this, the two are not connected. And they want a guy telling them, it's not your fault, it's because the uh, the government is playing favorite to immigrants and minorities. It's 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 really not your fault. Oh, and Jesus loves you and me. All of that. Right. And the other one, other Trump supporters, 
uh, love tax cuts, love those tax cuts, which he's promising more of. We saw that. I mean, he's not even hiding it. He's going to these people and saying, give me a billion dollars to run on and I'll cut your taxes. Uh, quid pro quo. He just right out said it. You know, yeah. those are the people who support Trump, either the the ignorant who love being told that they're really nice people who just don't uh, don't get a good chance or uh, they're billionaires who get tax cuts. That's who supports Trump. That's it. Everybody else should be against him. Right. Well, you know, the thing about Donald Trump, he's got all these trials. He's got the one he just lost to the tune of 34 convictions. He's got three other ones, D.C., Georgia, and Florida. But he's got even more problems than that coming. We heard about the story that uh, the IRS is coming after him for yep. what? Fraud. And they, <laughs> they're looking to maybe get $100 million. And then we hear yeah. about him going to the oil executives and saying, listen, man, I'll give you a billion dollars and yeah. I'll get rid of all your regulations. Well, they're not going to give him yeah. a billion dollars because they're smart enough to know that he's not going to get elected and they'll never get their money back. But that is the essence of quid pro quo. Then he started talking to pro-Israeli donors and said, listen, if you give me money and support me, I'll make sure I deport all the protesters for Palestine and for Gaza, which he can't do. And these people, these donors yeah. should have enough sense to know that he won't get money from them either. But all of these are attempted crimes. These are all quid pro, pro quo types of things. So even before, after he gets through all these other trials, he's going to be, he's going to be fucked for the rest of his life, which probably isn't going to be very long he's going to be 78 but this guy is never going to be out of court and out of trouble it's never going to happen that's why i still think he'll run at some point and uh I, you know I, i'd love the perp walk when they drag him off the plane but uh you really think he'll try to I, take off really, i think he will when he's when he when the rat is backed into the corner the rat will fight or the rat will run if he's got an avenue to run, he'll run. That's the question, though. Does he have an avenue? Does he have the opportunity? Like you pointed out, people say, oh, go to Russia. Vladimir Putin has no use for him right now. He has no value. Saudi Arabia, they have no value in him at all. In fact, they got to get the $2 billion back from his son-in-law. Uh, North Korea, that's not an option. Nobody else wants the motherfucker. The problem Donald Trump has with running is he can't hide. Everybody knows who he is. And I want to see what you think about this. In addition to not having any place to go, he is surrounded by Secret Service. Now, as much as they're right. protecting Donald Trump, they are also an arm of law enforcement. They are an arm of law yeah. enforcement. If they allow Donald Trump to leave the country illegally, they better be going with him because they're going to have some shit to pay. Right. I think he's got a few loyalists there that he could he thinks he can count on in that quarter. I do. Um, I don't really know if he'll run. I'm just kind of hoping he will because <laughs> I just want to see that. You know, I want to see the fighter planes come alongside and turn it back, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, and then drag him down the steps. Yeah. I like drama. What can I tell you? Especially I, think... I like uh, People always ask me, why do you think he won't be the nominee? And they think that the Republicans will bail on him. I don't believe the Republicans will bail on him. No. They can't bail on him because if they bail on him, then all the Trump fucks won't vote. And then all the down ballot people get fucked, which I'd love to see, but they won't do I'd that. I'd love to see that too. I personally think that with all that's hanging over his head and all that's happening and being a narcissist and being having a broken emotional state that uh, this is just going to crush him. At some point, he's going to be either mentally or physically incapacitated. He just won't be able to do it. That's a lot to ask for a guy who's 78 years old, who's not healthy. All these crimes, all these trials, the money problem, the evidence, the embarrassment, all this shit, it's going to be too much for him to take. Now, I hope he is the candidate because I think that's the best scenario for the Democrats. I just don't know if he can make it to that point. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, 
there is a there is always of course if it's getting really bad there is the convention they have to go to where they could rise up and nominate someone else and very unlikely i would think i think they'll stick with him to the end unless he keels over and then what happens because this is this is not the republican party this is the party of trump right. uh, that is what it's been he's put everybody in there the dnc his daughter-in-law runs and all of that you know i mean who, who gets the nod, all these vice presidential, the people vying for vice president, there's not one of them that anyone would ever vote for uh, because he's humiliated them along the way and made them look like puppets and idiots. I'm yeah. uh, making them show up wearing blue blazers and red ties at his, uh, yeah. at his uh, trial and being his spokesperson, which was thoroughly stupid but and disgusting. But... And, and each of them being interviewed and having the interviewer ask them, was the last election fair? And them refusing, yeah. refusing to say that it was and just, you know, turning into human pretzels to avoid answering that question when everybody's sitting back going, boy, do you look ridiculous? Is it really that important to you to kiss Trump's butt for four years? Because that's all you're going to get to do. Right. You're not going to have any power. And when Trump goes down, you go with him. There's nothing. This this you will never bounce back. And who do we have? Rubio, Vance, uh, uh, Tim, uh, Tim Scott, uh, Nikki, you know, Tim Scott, and, and nobody that you would you would ever want to be a president. And he's already looking at like Tom Cotton and other people that that legitimately could be considered a candidate. Although I have no respect for Tom Cotton, don't get me no, wrong. No. He's, he's not an idiot, though. He's not not an idiot, but he's just he's uh, a vile person who has really bad values. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, he's not an idiot. You know, I know it's not true, but in my mind, in my twisted mind, when I saw all those people dressed like Donald Trump in the blue suits and the red ties. I'd hoped in my mind that when they got to the courthouse, they all got out of a tiny clown car. I just imagined that happening. <laughs> <laughs> it was so ridiculous. It was, it, it was crazy. Now you talk about the, the um, convention. There's another factor to consider about the convention because Donald Trump will be sentenced on uh, July 11th, the convention comes yeah, three two days, days after that, two or three days before yeah. that. Uh, that sentence is going to have some impact on that convention, and nobody's going to know until a couple of days before the convention. He could literally be sitting in jail, either by way of the gag order uh, violations or just by his, his, his term. Because when he is sentenced, they're probably going to take him right away. They're going to cuff that bitch and put him in jail if that's what yeah. happens. Or if he's on probation or he's on yeah. house lockdown. How can he go to a convention if he's locked down in his home? Well, this is the thing. The, the probation could say, no, you can't go. Sorry. Too bad. You should have been a good boy. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be seen. But um I don't know if he goes to jail, but maybe the Republican Party starts going. Although, what's left of it? What's yeah. left of it that isn't Trump? Who do they who, have? Who has power in the Republican Party besides Trump? Who do they have that has any support? And who do they have that Trump's Trump Lafux will actually support? Because if they go away and they just don't vote, Republican Party's fucked anyway. But this is just going yeah. to make it worse. You know, we all had anticipation of this trial. It happened. We got the best possible result. Now people are going to be looking for the next thing to be excited about, to be looking forward to. And of course, the sentencing is one of those things. But there's something coming before the sentencing. On June 27th, there's this alleged debate going to happen between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden is taunting yeah. the fuck out of him, and he's doing it for a very good reason, because I think most of us believe that as much as Donald Trump said he wanted to debate because he was desperate, a lot of us think he isn't going to show because he can't help but make yeah. himself look like a fool. But if he doesn't show, he's going to look like a pussy ass bitch because Joe Biden keeps talking about it. 
This is going to be interesting to see yeah. if he shows how bad he fails or if he bails on it and what kind of lame excuse he's going to use for, for bailing on it. Well, and if Joe sticks to his guns and demands, makes the demands that he did, sticks with those that, you know, if they cut off the mic and they can't talk over each other and that sort of thing, and they can't have a part as an audience and so forth, it would be an interesting debate because, as you say, Trump has no knowledge. All he can do is lie. So, you know, right. he loses automatically. Um, Joe has a great track record. I mean, he can say, my unemployment numbers are better than yours. Price of gas yeah. is about the same. Uh, what is it? What is it you did again? Um, oh, you stole secrets. That's right. You know. Right. Um, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think Joe wins any debate because Trump doesn't debate. Trump does one long sentence and and jump and tries to attack people. You know, right. that's that's his idea of a debate. Um, I think debates lost any relevance during the when Al Gore decided to be an idiot um, when he went against Bush. And I really think the debates are what killed Al Gore. He was such an obnoxious piece of crap that, uh, that uh, about it that everybody thought it made George look Bush look really reasonable and kind of a nice guy. And, uh, the, the, in, the, um, the Republicans want comparison. to make, they want to make Joe Biden out to be this doddering old man that can't complete a sentence. But time after time, Joe Biden plays Mike Johnson. And in this situation, he played Donald Trump. Donald Trump said, I want to debate because yeah. he was desperate because he knows he's losing. So Joe says, yeah, yeah, I'll debate you. I'll debate you. And then he and then Joe does the smart thing. He impugns his his ego. He says, yeah, I'll debate yeah. you. In fact, I'll, I'll debate you two times. I don't know when you want to do this, but I know you have Wednesdays free. Well, that pissed yeah, off Donald yeah, Trump. A jam. Yeah. And Donald Trump just reacted. He got emotional. He said, fuck yeah, I'll debate you without even considering the rules that were laid out by Joe Biden and, and the Democrats. Like you say, cutting off the mic, no audience, all that shit. He jumped on it. He reacted. He was not thinking. And I know his 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 staff afterwards said, oh, wait a minute, that's not a fucking good idea. <laughs> no. So after afterwards, he realizes he fucked up. So what does he go to? Well, I think Joe's on drugs. We need a drug test. Well, I would love a drug test because I think Joe would be fine. The ironic thing yeah. is they keep telling us Joe's on cocaine. But you told us Joe's sleepy. You can't be on cocaine yeah. and be sleepy. Try to explain yeah. that to anybody who's ever done the drug. Well, talk to Don Jr. He can tell you. Yeah, and and we know that Trump uses Adderall like it's going out of style. So, yeah, yeah. Know, there's that. But that, that's the point. Is Donald Trump will use an excuse without thinking the potential ramifications to themselves. Let's take a drug test. Well, Donnie, then you're going to have to take a drug test and it's not going to go well for you. God knows what kind of medication you're on for whatever disease you have, mental yeah. or physical. Joe's obviously taking the normal medications a guy that's 82 years old would take. But do you think he? that's what's going to be the creative way he bails on this on this? Uh, uh, debate because there's no way he can walk into this debate and look good. If you want an example of that, take the last speech he did. He spent 30 minutes talking about nothing, lying, attacking, and looking stupid after this these convictions. The guy doesn't have the wherewithal to come off looking good in a debate. He just does not. No, and uh, his grooming has gone to hell too. Have you noticed yeah, that? I the, have. The... <laughs> So I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, um, it's you know, a circus, and it shouldn't be a circus. You know, we have qualified men and women to be president. I can name 10 without stopping to think. Um, most of them would be Democrats. There's right. actually a couple of Republicans I could probably live with. Um, but um, we can do better than Donald Trump. I, I put up a thing the other yesterday that said the founding fathers never prohibited felons for running for office. 
because they never expected the American public to set the bar that low. Right. I mean, right. why would you? <laughs> you know. You know, I was thinking about Donald Trump. Well, you mentioned his grooming, the way he looks, the weird fucking makeup. And you know who he reminds me of? Now, you're going to have to help me out here. You're the theatrical guy. I don't know much about it. I just know a couple things. But he kind of reminds me of the Nora Desmond character. Am I right about that? Where she's this old Hollywood star and she's fucking weird and Carol Burnett did something about her. He reminds me of the old star that thinks she's beautiful and takes takes a Gl lipstick yeah, and runs Swanson. it off. Yeah, Gloria Swanson. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's what he no, reminds um, me of. Nora Desmond is the character. By That's the way. what okay. I was right then. Nora Desmond. Yeah. I'm fucking brilliant. I don't I never even seen the movie. <laughs> but I saw yeah. Carol Carol uh, Burnett's version of it on the Carol Burnett right. show. That's how unsophisticated I am. But that's you know, he was a caricature before. Now he appears yeah. to be a caricature of a character it's yeah it's it's weird and he reminds me of the joker more than anything i mean <laughs> when it comes it comes to the makeup and 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 not the uh not the jack nicholson joker who you know had very precise makeup yeah. the keith ledger joker who had it kind of smeared on and That's made right. it much, which made it much more terrifying and much more grotesque actually but when you, uh, by the way, there, did you notice they're making a new Joker movie? No. With um, River Phoenix, not River Phoenix, uh, the other Phoenix. Um, uh, the guy yeah. who played it, just Joaquin. He he just played it. Well, the, Joaquin, uh, he just played the Joker, which is an excellent movie, by the way. And, yeah. Uh, played more realistically than the Batman stuff, but uh, uh, he was actually kind of brilliant in it. But they're making another one now with Lady Gaga as. Uh, Harley Quinn. That will be good. It should be an interesting. It should, should be an interesting take on the whole uh, genre for sure. Yeah, L Lady Gaga I, was one of those people. When she first came out, I wanted to hate her, and then I heard her sing. I heard her do the duets with Tony Bennett. I'm gone. This girl can sing, but she's got a little weird. I mean, this is the woman who came out on stage in a meat suit. So she might be just yeah. the right kind of weird to play that role. Yeah, well, remember, I worked at the Walker Art Center for years, and they actually have a meat suit that was designed by somebody. I forget that they drag out every now and then. And they didn't, don't do it very often because they have it's a pattern, and they have to recreate it with fresh meat, <laughs> obviously. Wow. But, uh, wow. Uh, I actually, I have quite a bit of respect for Gaga, and a lot of it has to do with how she bonded with Tony and kept him going, right. um, you know, and, and gave him some great performances very late in life um, and uh, kind of took care of the guy. So I, I have a lot, I give her props for sure, and she can sing. Yeah, she is an incredible singer. It's, it's, it's truly amazing. Um, so we're, we're getting toward the end of the show, but... Um, at this point, with all that's happened, with the convictions, I see a decline in Donald Trump. We were just talking about it. Where do you think that goes? Does he decline all the way or does he kind of stay steady in decline? W what do you see him? I, I see him going off the ledge, but maybe you see it differently. No, I actually think that uh, as as the walls close in and you're, you're uh, Norman Desmond, I said Nora, but it is Norma, I think. Nora Desmond um, was uh, was very apt. And I also see uh, um, the Humphrey Bogart um, Kane Mutiny Court Martial. Captain Queen. Captain Queen with the, Queen Queen. With the, uh, the uh, ball bearings, rolling the ball bearings in his hand. I see, I see him actually falling apart like that. I mean, I think it's already happening. We've seen a couple of instances where I don't know what, if he's off his medication or he's on it or what, where he goes out and he just rambles and stumbles and slurs. And uh, uh, we've seen that. And I think that's going to continue to get worse. I saw his uh, niece, who's a psychiatrist and hates his guts, obviously, right. um, you know, pretty much predicting that, that it's going to keep 
he's going to keep falling apart. You know, limbs are going to drop off. He's going to be like a zombie eventually, you know, as, as everything about him falters and fails. And uh, at, least that's, at least that's what I'm hoping for. It's a good visual. Well, here's the important question, though. If he di di diminishes to that extent where it's just ridiculous, it's pathetic, it's sad, it's not right, do the Trump fucks jump off the bandwagon? Do they finally say, yeah, this is too far, we can't go with it? Or do they stick with it? I think that I, because I've heard Tom Cotton mentioned, I think some people behind the scenes are saying, we got to have a backup. Yeah. Uh, none of these others. We can't have Rubio. We can't have Scott. We can't have Nikki. We can't have this one. We got to have somebody that's got a little credibility uh, who can step in. We're yeah. still going to lose, but at least we can start to rebuild the party by having something of a credible candidate. But if Trump goes, the party goes, and no, so does the down ballot, because they won't come out and vote for Tom Cotton. No. Um, and I don't think they'll come out and vote for Trump either, for that matter. But but we do know they did show up last time enough that it was a, a very close election. We I hope that won't happen again. Um, and then if we can if we can get another if we can get another four years for Biden, followed by um, whoever whether it's his current vice president or someone else, then we can do things like getting rid of the electoral college, expanding the Supreme Court, and doing the other things we need to do to set the country right. Because right now, these are being used against the general population, against the will of the people. Uh, um, the will of the people for abortion is like 70 to 20, you know, 70-some right. uh, to 20-some. Uh, that's the will of the people. Yet the Supreme Court is is you know overturned Roe v. Wade, and there are many other things that are the will of the people that uh, need to be addressed that are being held back artificially by things like the Electoral College, the Supreme Court, and and other things that need to be addressed. But we need to bear Biden to fail to finish out his term, and we need two more Democratic turns, and we can set the country back on it proper course that should I, be our aim i think when joe biden is reelected, i'm hoping that he'll step back from his centrist ideas and start thinking about building a legacy that can't be denied and i think the first four things he's got to do not necessarily in this order first of all he's got to replace merrick garland we need somebody strong yep. as the attorney general secondly we need to codify roe v wade Yep. Thirdly, we've got to address the problem with the Supreme Court. And the last thing is something a listener told me, and I tend to agree, we got to get rid of Citizens United. Yep, that's that's paramount. Um, right now, money counts more than anything. And uh, we can mobilize, 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 but they can buy, buy, buy. So, right. um, um, and and this is this is. The, this is what has started happening with Reagan and has happened with every Republican administration. Every time they cut taxes, that gives them more money to use in skullduggery right. um, because the billionaires have all, all the money they need. The rest of it they can use to make sure they don't lose a penny. Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Ed, we're going to wrap things up for the Rational Boomer podcast. Thank you for coming back. People have been anticipating you you're here. Let's 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 do what we can to get back on track to make a re regular, more regular appearance. It depends on your schedule, my schedule, all this shit, but we'll make yeah. it work one way or another. Yeah, sounds good. Glad all right. To talk to you. Good Let's, talking to oh, you too. By, by the way, stop by uh, my uh, yes. holler troll. And uh, I haven't put up any videos lately. Uh, exactly. I've been doing some... Uh, um, some more um, uh, just comments with music right. and check those out. They seem to be doing pretty well too, but I'll get back to the videos. I've just been too busy to write the things, but we'll get back to it. Be, uh, yeah, by all means, check out uh, uh, ch at check Holler out Troll. at Holler Troll, H-O-L-L-E-R-T-R-O-L-L. -L -L. 
Um, Ed's got yeah. some great stuff on TikTok and on YouTube. By all means, check it out, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be well worth your while. It's great stuff. Ed, thanks very much. And for those of you listening, I want to thank you for taking the time to do that. I hope you have a great day, and we will talk to you again tomorrow.